1967 Shelby GT500. I purchased back in 1977. This car gets really interesting under here. With the twin Paxons and twin carburetors, they're making six, 700 horsepower easily. You just put it to yeah. 11. My number's a little higher than yours. Turn your driving dreams into a reality at Hemmings.com, the world's most trusted collector car marketplace since 1954. Hemmings offers live online auctions and tens of thousands of collector cars, trucks, and bikes daily. Greg? Hi, Colin. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for bringing your uh, 67 GT500. No problem. You're, you're kind of foolish, I think, for bringing a car like this and to me to get an appraisal, but... Well, as we've done a couple of projects together. Yeah. So, yeah. why not? Right. I don't you're get very it out trusting. much. Yeah. So, tell me a little bit about your car and your history with the car. Well, this car I purchased back in 1977 from a woman that was the sister of the original owner. 1977, I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> well, I was pretty young at the time, and uh, I saw this in the Penny Saver, which is a little little newspaper yep. that almost towns had for resale. It was just a, in there for, as a Mustang, went down and took a look at it, and saw it was a Shelby Mustang. She said that this was a car that uh, her brother had bought new. Unfortunately, he got drafted, went into Vietnam, and never came home in 68. Okay. So it was very low mileage, just sitting in this garage, I purchased the car. I had it for a few years, and I actually sold it to a good friend of mine to buy my first house. Okay. And with the promise that I was able to buy this car back. 35 years later, I was able to buy it back. And have you done anything to it since you bought it back? Um, yes, some special things, because my company is uh, bought out uh, McCullough and Paxton about 20 years ago. Okay. So I thought this would be a great car to um, put two Paxtons on it. Two Paxton superchargers. Yep. A little bit's okay, a little more is good, but you just <laughs> went all the way. You just put it to yeah. 11. Yeah. Okay, all right, well, I'm excited to look at that. Other than that, is it is it the original engine, transmission, sheet metal paint? What's going on here? Honestly, I took the original engine out because I was going to twin supercharge it and put some power to it, so right. I didn't want to hurt the original engine, so I built my own 428 uh, with a little bit of stroke in it because it's going to get plenty of air from twin Paxtons. Okay. Um, it's, about, it's, it's really only about uh, 445 cubic inches. Um, and with the twin Paxons and twin carburetors, you know, they're making anywhere from six, 700 horsepower easily and okay. maxed out about 750. That's all the air they can make on a, okay. on a big block. Basic premise here is, you know, I'm doing an appraisal. And while I do the appraisal, because it's somewhat invasive and you don't want to see it, you don't, no. you don't want to see how the, how the sausage is made. <laughs> so we're going to usher you away okay. to, a, to a secure location, okay. the soundproof booth. Yep. And then we're going to call you back out here and have a conversation. I'll tell you my number and see if you fall down or you jump for joy. So we're taking a drive in Craig's 67 GT500 with not one, but two Paxton Superchargers. I finished my appraisal of Craig's 1967 Shelby GT500. It's an interesting car. He has a long history with it. He originally bought it in 1977, like he told us. That's pretty special stuff. But what I want to start with is what's under the hood, because this car gets really interesting under here. Now, originally, this would have had a 428 with just dual quads on it and nothing else. Now, Craig, being in the business of building Paxton superchargers for Shelby's, wanted to show what he could do. So he put two of the bad boys under the hood of this car. So instead of just a regular old air cleaner that this car would have originally come with and no forced induction, it now has double superchargers. This is a very similar setup to the two twin Paxton supercharged Cobras that Shelby built in period, which later became known as the Super Snakes. 
In the middle of all of this insanity, Craig has done something pretty smart. He's taken out the original numbers matching engine for this car and put it on a shelf. In its place, he's built a hot rod 445 cubic inch engine to put all this forced induction onto. So if something goes wrong and he blows it up, he's not destroying value. Beyond that, the car just presents as a really nice, low mileage, rust-free California car. The Shelby serial number tag is here. It's number 984, so it's a very early car. Now, being early 1967, it has what is referred to as inboard headlights. These were later changed to what they call outboard headlights, where they move them to the outside of the grill because of lighting laws. They were getting in trouble for having these lights too close together. Now, let's continue our walk around, and I'll show you some other stuff. So this car is dark moss green. Today, it's a very desirable color. They made a lot of them in period, and while green fell out of favor for a little while, today, people love it. The other thing you can notice on the car here is that it has what they call Magstar wheels. This was an optional wheel for 1967. The base wheel was a 15 by six inch steel wheel with a Thunderbird hubcap that had a Shelby emblem placed into the middle of it. You could also get a 10 spoke aluminum wheel or these Magstars. So there were three wheel choices for 67. Besides packs and superchargers, Craig is in the business of making new wheels for vintage Shelbys. His company makes Magstar wheels. So Craig has made a special set of Magstar wheels just for his own car. He made 15 by seven inch ones for the front and 15 by eight inch ones for the back because he wanted to put on some big tires to try to get all that twin Paxton power to the ground. If we walk around the outside, you see the original fiberglass scoops Everything's in place. It looks essentially bone stock and untouched from new. Now, in the trunk, one of the casualties of putting two superchargers under the hood of this car means that the battery had to be relocated back here. So Craig's moved the battery to the rear, much like a 1965 Shelby. So that's one modification that would be easy to reverse if you decide to put back in the original engine and take the blowers off of it. You can see he's having a little bit of a rummage sale here in the trunk with uh, these tail light covers. He must have had to do a little wiring repair or replace some light bulbs. But what I do like to find is this kind of stuff. I like the fact that he has a stack of paperwork, original California registration receipts, some old pictures, the original owner's manual. He has some Melbourne's license plate frames from the original selling dealership. And also, there is a magazine back here that this car was in. Craig used this car for a Motor Trend Classic article. So the car has also got some press, which adds to its value. When it was in the magazine, you can see it had the correct 10 spoke wheels on it, so you can see the difference. There's also kind of a neat picture back here of the car years ago in a garage covered with junk next to a Pantera. So I would assume this is where he purchased it. So we walk around the other side of the car here and there is one feature that I noticed that the rear quarter panel is covered in tire rubber, which is odd because I wouldn't think a guy that put twin Paxons on his car would drive it like that, but I guess to each their own. More of the same over here. You can see some flaws in the original paint. Not a big deal. It's actually nice to have that level of originality. On the interior from this side, we can see as original seat covers, what appears to be the original carpet, the original factory roll bar, and the factory shoulder harnesses in here. Everything's where it should be, and it's all correct 1967 Shelby stuff. Now let's get behind the wheel and see what it looks like in there. So there are a few little modifications in here, obviously, that have been done for the twin packs and installation. It has this triple gauge mount on the steering column, which is not original, it has a vintage sun fuel pressure gauge, a vintage Stuart Warner uh, boost pressure gauge, and a modern digital uh, wideband air fuel ratio monitor. Because when you put that kind of pressure into a big block Ford with the two blowers on it, you probably wanna make sure it doesn't blow up. So Craig is keeping tabs on it with all of this. The car shows 28,000 original miles. Uh, the original aluminum dash applique is, you know, fading a little bit, which is common of these cars. It has a really nice original uh, steering wheel on it. This is hard to find one of these wheels this nice. Uh, the factory gauges under the dash are all there. And I did take a look in the glove box and found something very interesting. I found a couple of pictures in here, which I, I believe are Craig, and these were look like they were taken last year. Um, he's wearing a different shirt than he's wearing today. Uh, same car. Yeah, it looks like maybe he was doing a little work on it. So I, like I said, I think these were within the last 12 months, but maybe I'm wrong, they could be older. 
kind of cool to have stuff like that. <laughs> so it has a little lumpy idle and a little louder exhaust. The car does have headers on it, so it has a little tinnier sound to it. But really, just sitting here idling, you wouldn't know much of what's going on under there unless you hit the gas and you hear the superchargers lined up. So. So a big block Ford with a pair of Paxtons on it is never a bad thing. So I finished my appraisal of Craig's GT500. I have my number. I'm gonna call him back out here and tell him that number and see if he becomes as pressurized as this engine or if he's nice and cool about it. Let's go get him. Hey Craig, welcome back. All right. Can we still be friends no matter what happens here? Of course, Colin. Okay, <laughs> how much is that gonna cost me? <laughs> Well, I like your car. As you know, Great. I've gone over it. I've checked it out. I have a number. Yep. Before I give you my number, mm -hmm. I want your number. Because it's just like when you go scrapping, like you never want to throw out the first number, so it's your turn. You get to throw out the first number. Well, it, you know, besides the current market, which may be a little bit, I don't know, inflated right now, but uh, I think this car is probably a two hundred dollars to $225,000 car in okay. today's market. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, not that you would sell it, obviously, because you have a pretty good history with it. You let it, yeah, you let it get away car. once. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, I like your number. Would you sell it for two hundred? No. Are you sure? <laughs> My number is a little higher than yours. Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, I think today's market is, you know, going pretty well. Yep. Cars are trading Inflation, for a lot of money, yep. and this is a special car. You know, you have a unique thing. You have a car with this hot rod, twin packs, and setup that. Not a lot of people have. You pull into a car show, this pop the hood. It's I'm cool. sure people crowd around. But if you want to go back the other way, you throw the stock engine back in it. So yep. you haven't really destroyed any collectability by just putting in your, plugging in your hot rod engine. Right. So that was the idea. Yeah. So I think today, I think the car is worth more like two hundred fifty thousand hmm. dollars. Wow. Pretty so, cool. Yeah. yeah. I like how you're unfazed by it. That's good. I was ready to jump back. <laughs> If I was in the mood to sell the car, then maybe I would be more into it. But um, you know what? It's kind of an heirloom. It's probably going to be in the family forever. But I did find that recent photograph of you in the glove box. Uh -oh. And I mean, <laughs> looks like you got lots of time left. So <laughs> thanks so much for bringing it. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Colin. Always good to see you. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Bye bye. Colin's assessment, I think, is pretty spot on from my assessment. I mean, I've been in this industry for many years, and so has Colin, and he appraises a lot of cars, and he sees a lot of stuff, so I think he's pretty spot on. It's, uh, it's a pretty special car to me.